Hi, everybody. Boom. Okay. Hi, everybody. Good afternoon. It's your favorite mormatrician, aka Dr. Lulu. Good afternoon. Happy Sunday. Welcome to Ask Dr. Lulu. Yay. I've missed you guys. I've missed actually broadcasting from this particular location. It feels kind of weird. But it's Sunday afternoon and it's um, 2 p.m. So it's time to get started. You know how we do? If you're on, if you're not on, we're just going to get started. Hi, Sydney. Welcome to the party, Sydney. You are my first girl today. Yay. So I am on on my personal page on Tina Live and on Ask Dr. Lulu. So it's time to get started. So how is everybody doing? How was your week? Hey, Sydney, how was your week? Fix that one little strand there. Don't you just hate that one strand that always kind of gets in the way? Hi, Andy. All right. So if you're on my personal page, I can see you. If you're on anywhere else, I can't see you, but it's 2 p.m. So the show must go on. So let's get started. Today, if you saw my announcement, I, I, it's actually my blog for the month, but I was like, you know what, since my book is literally ready to go, we're just waiting for the last minute stuff that I can't control. I was like, why don't I just hype it a little bit and let's, you know, take little bites out of it. So my idea was to go ahead and, and, and do um, a piece of it for my blog, which is called 12 Myths about suicide. I thought, you know, why don't we do that? And then I know everybody doesn't read my blog, so why don't we do it on Facebook Live this Sunday as well? So if you've already read it on my blog, then you know what it's about, but stay for the party. I mean, it's fun, okay? So first things first, let us, well, let's begin. So the first thing is most people think that suicide is not real. Um, I'm not sure who but a lot of people do think that suicide is is not real. They didn't really kill themselves. They can't really do it, you know. It's too rich or she's too rich or she's a doctor or whatever adjective they want to put there. They use it and they say, you know, suicide is just not real. They don't really, they're not really going to kill themselves. Well, you and I know that suicide is real. People do kill themselves. As a matter of fact, as you know, if you don't know already, it is the number two killer of youth aged some people say 10 some say 15 to 34 that range and it's a number four killer for 35 to 54 so if you were not in that first group you're definitely in the second group if you're watching this show and um that's that's real that's really really real so that's one and then number two uh, yeah so don't take any kind of suicidal um threat as a joke okay high hope this is real stuff. Suicide is real. Don't let anybody tell you that it's not. People do kill themselves. Black folk do kill themselves. It's not only a white person's problem. So number two is talking about suicide is a bad thing in the sense that if you talk about suicide, then there's a higher chance of the person you're telling, especially if he's a teenager or your child, is becoming like, yeah, it's like you're suggesting, you are giving them the permission to do that. So that is wrong on so many levels. First of all, the only way to, to get help, honestly, is to talk about it. The only way to avoid the stigma involved is to talk about it. So a lot of times you just find people not wanting to say anything. They don't want to speak. They don't want to talk because they are worried that you are going to think, what are you going to think about them? Or you're going to think they're crazy. Or you're going to start saying things like, I can't believe you want to kill yourself. What do you mean? You know, you have all this money or you have all this fame or all this money, you know, or, you know, you're a pastor or when well, you're a doctor. I mean, I'm just going to throw us out there because as you know, on average, one doctor kills themselves every day. So it is that serious for us to not ever assume that talking about it it's not going to make a difference. Talking about anything, really, if you go to your doctor because you have a headache and you tell him you have a stomach ache, you're going to throw the doctor off. We're not magicians. If you're suicidal and you don't come and say you're suicidal, we're not going to know you're suicidal. I mean, that's the truth. I can't help you if I don't know what the problem is. So I'm saying, please 
don't ever think that talking about it is a bad thing. As a matter of fact, we now know that when people hear other people's stories, like I usually say we are connected by our storylines. When people hear other people's stories, that's when they actually say, you know what? If that person could do it, then I can do it too. Hi, Stella. Hi, Eleanor. If that person could do it, then I can do it too. It, really, I did not know that even she is going through that or that even he is going through that. And therefore, because you're talking about it, you're actually empowering not only yourself, but also your listener. So I say, talk about it. I mean, don't let anybody vet how you're going to talk about it also. You know your own story. You know how you're going to communicate your story. Nobody should tell you how to talk about your own story. So own your story. Own it and take it to town. Tell people about it. You will realize that the more you talk about it, the stronger you are, the stronger they are because they're listening to you and they're interacting with you. And just overall, the better the world is. A lot of people don't realize that people are going through stuff. And then when they hear you, they say, oh my God, really? I had no idea. Well, that's what we're talking about it. So the second myth is talking about suicide is bad or telling someone about suicide is going to suggest it to them or anything in that realm. That's the second myth. So that's bursted. Okay. The third myth is you need to pray more. I have to say that very slowly because a lot of people think that people who pray don't get depressed or people who pray don't become suicidal or people who pray, I don't know, don't die. I mean, I don't know what to say, but it's not true. Actually, what I tell people about is if you're going to, if you're going to pray, then I ask you to please pray for strength to carry on, pray for supportive spouses and supportive family members and supportive doctors and supportive community. Pray for that. Don't be in denial. Jesus Christ was the number one physician. We know that, right? But even the people that came to him had to tell him what was wrong with them. So pray about that. Pray that you have the strength to, to come out with your problems. Pray that you have the strength to reach out Tell somebody, say something, pray for that. Because a lot of people are hushed because they feel like if they talk about it, people are going to look at them funny. Going back to number two, right? So pray for supportive doctors, supportive spouses. In my case, y'all know my story. I had a supportive spouse and that's why I'm still here today. Pray for supportive spouses. Pray for supportive people in your area, like the Liberians like to say, in your area. Pray for people that are going to be there for you. Pray that your pastor will understand that this is a real problem. Pray that your church members will not ostracize you because of what you're going through. Because indeed, a lot of people that we know now that, that talk junk about other people, actually that's what they're going through, right? So don't say that the person who is depressed and or suicidal is because they're not Christian enough, they're not religious enough. As you guys know, Christianity is not the only religion. Heaven is not full of Christians. Heaven is full of good people. You can quote me on that. You know, I haven't been to heaven, but I know that pretty much. Okay? So why don't you just pray that that person that's listening to you will say the right thing? But don't, for you who's listening, don't belittle it by saying, oh, because you're not religious enough or because you're not. Christian or Muslim or whatever enough because that is so not true and so not fair. Okay? So that's number three. Oh yeah, and don't tell them that they're being dramatic. Please. I don't know anyone that arrived at a decision to kill themselves or arrived at a decision to, to die by their own hands that decided overnight. Nine times out of ten, this is something that's been going on for a while. So it's not something that just happens overnight. So don't tell them that they're being dramatic or you don't really mean it. You're, you're not serious. Don't tell them that, okay? And then, of course, because we're talking about religion and prayer, there are people out there, believe it or not, who believe that religious people do not die by suicide or cannot die by suicide. While Jesus didn't die by suicide, we know a lot of religious people today who have died by suicide. We know that pastor from California was a big mega church. He was actually out in the open with his struggles with mental illness. And what had happened was, I didn't realize this, but when I was looking into his story, I realized that the day that he killed himself, 
he had actually been a pastor at a funeral of another church member who killed herself. So that's what I call suicide contagion. Remember I said that, I talked about that a, a while back. People can actually kill themselves because of somebody else who killed themselves, who they know. That's called suicide contagion, suicide contagion, if you're potato or potato. So that gentleman actually killed himself. He's a pastor, or he was a pastor. There was another Nigerian pastor of also a mega church who also was apparently out in the open about his struggles with mental illness. He also killed himself. So pastors kill themselves. It's a, suicide is an equal opportunity disease. It's not a case where only certain people die by suicide, only certain ages, only certain sexes or certain races. No, okay? That pastor, those two pastors that killed themselves this summer, this year, are examples of the fact that anyone, anyone can die by suicide. Oh, look at Tanya. Hi, Tanya. Oh, thank you so much, Tanya. I thought your flight was at eight. Oh, wow. Well, thank you for joining us from the airport, Tanya. Thank you so much. So um, the next one is denial. The joke I like to use is denial is a big river in Africa. That's the only denial that I know, you know? Do not ever, ever say it's not going to happen to me. It's not going to happen to my child. It's not going to happen to my patient. It's not going to happen to my tribesman. Again, like I said, it's an equal opportunity situation going on when it's suicide. That's one. And then number two, it's, um, it's when you go into denial, what you're doing, in, when you're doing in effect is actually accentuating the shame and the stigma of suicide. That is the truth. Oh, my doctor says I have diabetes. My doctor says. That's denial, right? Oh, oh, my doctor says I got sugar. That's what they say in South Carolina. If you're from Lancaster and you're watching me, she says she's at the layover. Oh, okay, thank you so much for joining us from your layover. But the point I'm trying to make is you cannot be in denial about suicide. Like we said about point one, suicide is real, it's not a joke. And for people who are suicidal, making it something like a denial situation actually could push them off the edge literally speaking, because that is saying to them that what they're feeling, the anguish and the pain that they're going through is not real. Case in point, when we had the dot-com burst in 2008, there was a spike in suicides. The, rec the record is 5,000 men. We don't know about women, we don't know about other people, and we know for a fact that those 5,000 were just those that were counted, right? So what they said was 5,000 men in Europe and the UK and America, whatever, all killed themselves when that dot-com burst took place, which means when we had the financial crisis of 2008. So here's my proposition. For those of you who don't believe that despair and not depression is the number one reason of suicide, for suicide, how many milligrams of Prozac do you think would have fixed the man's bank account, the man who lost all his money during the dot-com burst. How many different kind of antidepressants anti do you think you could have given to him or her to help fix that emotion, that feeling of losing everything and being a failure? Just how many milligrams do you think would have worked? And so, of course, I'm fighting a, a battle that I know I'm going to win against a mammoth, AKA Big Pharma. If you don't know, now you know. Tell them I'm coming. Because what they're doing is they're making all of us, all of you actually watching me believe that depression and mental illness is the number one reason people die by suicide. I have news for you. Less than 46% of people who die by suicide had mental illness. Less than half of them. What about the other half? Don't tell me that they're undiagnosed because as a matter of fact, about half of, people, of the people who die by suicide saw their doctors, those people who had mental illness, saw their doctors within a month of their deaths. What we found out is they either are not taking their medication, like Anthony Bourdain, believe it or not, he was not taking his medication. He did not listen to his doctors. 
Either that or they are using, they are abusing substances. There's substance abuse going on with them in addition to what's going on, okay? Or they have no support from their family members. So my question to you is, if antidepressants work, follow me with this, and in the past five years, prescription antidepressants have quadrupled, then why are suicides on the rise? So when you can answer that question, we can have a conversation. The truth about it is suicides are rising for multiple other reasons. Actually, there are 23 reasons that I've found so far that lead to suicide. Mental illness is only one of them. And as long as we don't start focusing on the fact that more than mental illness, again, I'm going to say that again, more than mental illness is, is responsible for suicidal death, suicides will continue to rise. You can tweet that. You can quote me on that. As long as we don't start looking at the fact that there are 22 other reasons why suicides occur, and we only look at mental illness, suicide rates will not be going down anytime soon, especially in children. We can holler about that later on, but I digress. The next one is only professionals like me can detect suicidal behavior. Let us be honest. Hi, Teresa. Hi, Shola. Hi, Ike. Hi, Nene. What was I saying? Only prevent. So it's not true. When you know the signs of suicidal behavior, when you know what to look for, what to listen for, when you open your eyes, you know how they say it takes sight. When it doesn't take sight, yes, it doesn't take sight to reach the top. It takes vision. When you open your second set of eyes and you see the signs and symptoms of suicidal behavior, which by the way, are not necessarily symptoms of depression, by the way, okay? When you can see that, anyone can diagnose suicidal behavior. Anybody who allows themselves to see, because sometimes we, you know how they say the blind can see better? A lot of blind people have vision. They don't have sight, they have vision. They can see better than you and I that are opening our, our eyes and seeing each other. So until you're ready to start seeing the other realm and noticing suicidal behavior, four out of five teenagers who die by suicide, four out of five of them leave signs. 80% chance of rain, you're gonna get rain. So if four out of five of them are leaving signs, don't tell me when the child dies. We had no idea. We didn't know. A lot of times, the problem is the parents. And what happens when I start treating my parents? My patients get there. I wonder why. Tonya says, the signs are there. We need to learn them and be aware. Don't be afraid to ask someone if they want to or plan to hurt themselves. Thank you, Tonya. Spoken like a true future commander. Spoken like a true nurse. Indeed, indeed, you should be open enough to ask people, how are you doing? What happened to you? Not why. What happened? What happened is an open-ended question. It's an open-ended question. It helps them know that you care about them. But also your body language, lean in, right? Lean in. Oh my God. If you haven't read that book, read it. Lean in when you're asking them, how are they really doing? What happened? Do you ever feel like the world is better off without you? A lot of people find it easier to say yes than to say I need help, right? Remember that. Don't forget that. But please, not only professionals can diagnose suicidal behavior. It's on the web. Look it up. A lot of us see the signs. But what do we say? Oh, I didn't really think she was going to do it. Oh, but wait, she's Dr. Lulu. I can't believe she killed herself. But wait, what? She was so strong. Uh-huh. Those are the ones you need to look out for, the strong ones. They are the ones you want to pay attention to. The ones that say, oh, I'm fine. Oh, I got this. Trying to juggle everything with 
Exactly. Running on one engine. Those are the ones you want to look out for. So absolutely. Lutely. Bye, Tanya. She said her wheels are up. Oh, have a safe flight, okay? You can always press rewind and then watch it again. So, but, you know, let's continue. Another myth about suicide is once somebody is suicidal, they are always suicidal. That is not true. Nothing can be farther away from the truth. The truth about it is suicidal behavior, most of the factors that lead to suicidal behavior are at most, at best, temporary. When I was suicidal, I suddenly found that I was owing a lot of money to the IRS, a lot of money. And then coupled on top of that, I was already like overwhelmed, what I call overwhelmedness. I was overwhelmed because I just joined the Air Force. I became a commander. I became a single mother. I had all these new things just thrown at me that I was trying to juggle. I sold my beloved practice. And on top of everything, I found out that I owed the IRS all this money. And wait, the person who did not file for my taxes for five years was actually free. I was the one who was being held because the practice was in my name. So all of those things might not be enough for you. It was enough for me. And so for me, I was actively suicidal because I felt I had failed myself, I had failed my kids, I had failed my family, I had failed everybody that was important to me. And I just felt like, you know what? What's the use? Now, what happened to me was I spoke up. I spoke to the right person and they got me help. And let me tell you something. No amount of antidepressants would have fixed that. Remember, antidepressants also have a side effect of causing suicidal behavior. So if somebody is not truly depressed, if they're just overwhelmed like I was, no amount of antidepressants would have fixed the fact that I owed the government all that money, okay? Number one. Number two, if I kept taking it, which was what happened, I felt even more suicidal. So what happened? I stopped. So I am not a big proponent for taking antidepressants if you don't have depression. If the world is caving onto, on you and all of these things are happening, what we need to do is take a step back and start taking them one at a time. And that's what I did. I started checking off the boxes one at a time. What do we do about this? What do we do about that? What do we do about this? What do we do about that? And once I had a plan and I was able to kind of get my life back together, I'm fine. I haven't had any more suicidal behavior in like, I don't know, six, seven years whenever that happened. So the point I'm trying to make is be very careful to not just diagnose everybody with depression because that's what I see. And I had to step back a little bit when I was writing my book, it was initially about depression. And then as it turned out, it became about suicide, which is not quite depression. I had to change my MO. And that's why it took me 17 months to write it because I wasn't really ready to finish the book when I started it. And now I'm ready and I'm done. But the point I'm trying to make is be very careful not to throw everybody in the basket of depression. A lot of people are just meant, they have mental anguish not mental illness. I don't know if you can tell the difference. If you can tell the difference, please just type amen or just give me a high five. If you can tell the difference between mental anguish and mental illness. One of them is schizophrenia and anxiety and depression and all that. The other one is just, just a random list of problems that have caused you to become overwhelmed. And then you don't have any support. And then you're worried that if you say you're depressed, people are going to look at you funny. All of those things add up to cause you to get to the edge and even jump. Now, that is not saying that depression does not lead to suicidal behavior. What I'm saying is untreated depression. Yes, you can lead to, um, I got a pharmacist watching me. Hi, Kennedy, please give me an amen. Untreated depression can absolutely lead to suicidal behavior. Depression coupled with Substance abuse can lead to suicidal behavior. A lot of things coupled together can lead to suicidal behavior. But mental illness per se is only one of 23. So again, I say to you, I don't care if my friend, I'm big, I'm baby brother, Kennedy's watching. The truth about it is Big Pharma is behind the propaganda. And if indeed depression and antidepressants are working, which they claim they are, and if indeed antidepressants prescription have quadrupled, which it is, 
then why are suicides rising? This is the ultimate food for thought for you guys, okay? And that kind of brings me to the next point, which was once, um, which was only mental health issues can lead to suicide. We already talked about that. So mental health issues are not the only issues that can lead to suicide. Life issues. And if you don't believe me, ask the people who lost all of their money during the dot-com burst when we had the financial crisis. A lot of people, 5,000 men were told, not counting the women and the children that died by suicide during the financial crisis of 2008. None of those people had mental illness. They had mental anguish. So if you're listening to me, please type down mental anguish and not mental illness is, in the, is at the core of suicidal behavior. And you're okay. I think you guys got that. Suicides are sudden. That is a big old myth. If there was ever a myth, that's it. Suicides are not sudden. I don't know anybody that decides to suicide, which is suicide as a verb, that decides to do that overnight. A lot of time, a lot of times things have been happening and things have been piling up. And then they now get to the point where they're like, you know what? That's it. I'm out of here. But nine and a half times out of 10, suicidal behavior is never, ever sudden. Thank you, Unati. She wrote that mental anguish and not mental illness. They are both mental. They all affect the, the, the noggin and the heart, of course, and the body. But I want you to please be very careful when you focus too much on mental illness which already has a taboo on his own. Imagine a man who lost all his money during the financial crisis. And I keep going there because that's, that's something that we all remember. Imagine that man who is frustrated with himself and with life and at the point of, at the verge of killing himself because he lost all his money. Or imagine if someone worked for Enron, they lost all their money. People that invested in Enron, all of that. Imagine if those people uh, at that point where they're so distressed and then all you can say is here take some more Prozac what the man is already feeling is bad enough then Prozac has a side effect of suicidal behavior what do you think is going to happen in the meantime he still lost his money right so in my own case I had to realize wait I have my license I can rebuild and that's what I did and I started from scratch after my bankruptcy literally from scratch and you know in america where you file for bankruptcy you know what that means if you don't know look it up so i had to literally start from scratch and decide that you know what if i can believe it i can be it that's my ultimate mantra besides the fact that it takes vision and not sight to see the top but i digress also another point is threats are not serious please in the name of jesus allah your ikenga whatever it is that you believe in do not ever ever assume that a suicidal threat or a suicide threat cannot be carried out i like to say do not underestimate the power of determination if a child is determined to kill themselves a man or a woman is determined to kill themselves, do not underestimate it. Because a lot of times it's coming from a place of severe anguish, severe overwhelmness. And the last thing you can do is belittle that. Okay? The next myth is suicided persons are taking the easy way out. Oh my God. I had a counselor at my son's high school say those words to me recently it took everything in my power to not attack her <laughs> i was livid because she was so wrong people who die by suicide are not taking the easy way out at all if you don't believe me ask someone who's attempted suicide and they will tell you that that is the hardest thing hardest thing that they ever thought about and by the way that was number 12 it's the hardest thing that they've ever thought about it takes a lot to kill yourself it takes everything in your power to pull it off it's not a heroic act 
is not something to be praised. It's not a successful thing, but it is something that it takes a lot for you to pull off. So please don't ever think that someone who is suicidal, or not someone who died by suicide or died of suicide, was taking the easy way out. That is so wrong of you. That is so unfair. And I need you, if you've ever lost someone to suicide, if you're thinking that, please today stop thinking about that. I want you to come at them from a place of compassion, from a place of feeling that, oh my goodness, I wish I had known so I could help, which is what compassion is. And again, another fight that I'm fighting. People out there use empathy, which is great. I love me some empathy, okay? But I dare to say compassion is empathy's big brother. Compassion is empathy plus I would like to help. And to me, that comes from kindness, wanting to help. And so that is all I have for y'all today. So quick recap, 12 myths about suicide. I'm sure there are, all, there are others. I'm sure there are others. I just, I don't, I don't know that I can come up with any more. The 12 myths of suicide. Suicide is not real. You all know that it's a second because of this with my tribe, my population, kids, and it's the fourth leading cause of death for me because I'm age 35 to 52. And also for me as a veteran and for me as a doctor, I mean, I can just, I mean, I am just everywhere when you about suicide. Okay? Um, talking about suicide is bad or is going to encourage suicidal behavior is untrue. So that's the second myth. Um, person who is suicidal needs more prayers or needs more saving or needs to have more Jesus. That is untrue. You know, we talked about that. Religious persons do not die by suicide. That is untrue. Religious people, just like anyone else, suicide is an equal opportunity disease. You have heard that. Yes. So anyone can die by suicide. Um, People who are in denial about suicide, almost the same thing, I really do say suicide is not real. That's kind of the same thing. Please, 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 please. Most people who have attempted suicide and survived actually tell us that when they reached out for help, people were like, they don't mean it. They're not serious, you know? You're, you can't really be feeling suicidal. That's the word. That's the feeling. Only professionals can diagnose or can detect suicidal behavior. You and I know that. I don't care. Okay? Anyone, if you know the signs, anyone, anyone, you who's watching me right now can make a diagnosis of suicidal behavior. Absolutely. Once somebody is suicidal, they're always going to be suicidal. That ain't true. Depending on what is the underlying cause of your suicidal behavior. There are 23 causes that we could find of suicidal behavior. Only one of them is mental illness. The other ones are not mental illness. If LGBT child who has been ostracized by their family finds a loving family, they're no longer going to be suicidal. If someone who got divorced and is having a hard time with the divorce and is getting good counseling, they're no longer going to be suicidal. If somebody lost all their money like I did and went into severe mental anguish to the point that they felt they wanted to kill themselves if they get financial counseling and they get their life together and their money together they're no longer going to be suicidal if anything they're going to be empowered so that's just a few of the examples of things that cause people to become suicidal that are temporary and if you just switch out and get help you might even get the right person you might even get me right um only mental health issues can lead to suicide. You and I know that that is not true. We just talked about that. Mental health issues are only one of nearly 25 reasons why people die by suicide. So please, 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 mental health is just one of many. Suicides are sudden. That ain't true. I don't know anybody who has attempted suicide that will tell you that it's something they just decided to do last night or yesterday. A lot of times it's stuff that's been going on for months, weeks, and maybe even years. And they finally got to that point where they spoke to you and you said the wrong thing to them. So be very, very careful when somebody's suicidal because indeed they can and they will probably carry it out. So please, please be there for them.
Okay, be the one. There's actually um, a hashtag called hashtag be the one. Suicides are, well, the people that die by suicide um, want to die. Oh, yeah, I didn't do that one. Sorry. People that um, are, are attempting suicide actually want to die or suicidal people want to, die, want to die. The truth is most people who are suicidal actually don't want to die. They just want the pain to stop. And at that point in time, they have exhausted all their options. And then at that point where they're thinking, you know what, I've tried everything. At this point, I'm just going to. Many, many people who are suicidal do not want to die. They just want the pain to stop. A lot of children just want the bullying to stop. A lot of people like me just want the financial crisis to stop. A lot of people who, you know, I, I find themselves ostracized because they are LGBT just want that ostracism to stop. A lot of people just want the pain and mental anguish to stop. They feel like their whole body is on fire and they just want to put out the fire. And so please, please come from a place of compassion. Will you? Okay? Threats are not serious. They're not true. People who carry out the act of dying by suicide do carry out their threats. Be very careful not to belittle it in any way, shape, or form. It can and could probably happen. So please take it very, very seriously. Ask them, what can I do to help? Take them by the hand and go to the place where they can get help if you don't know what to say or you don't know what to do. But please don't assume that a threat is not serious. Don't say that the child is seeking for attention. Don't say that it's a, it's a, if it's a cry for help. Like, you know, I actually accept that phrase, a cry for help, because if someone is crying for help, then that means you need to ask yourself, well, why is the person crying for help? So I started thinking about it. Yeah, a cry for help, yes. Why are they crying for help? What are you as a parent doing or not doing, as a teacher doing or not doing, as the pastor doing or not doing that's making this person cry for help? So yes, I can accept a cry for help. But that's about it. Threats are serious. We have a high risk of suicide because threats are serious. And the last one I have here is people that have died by suicide are taking the easy way out. That is a big fat lie. In fact, that's more than a threat. Um, that, that's more than a myth. That's a lie, straight up lie. People who die by suicide do not take the easy way out. If you don't believe me, try it and tell me how easy that was. So indeed, we need to be compassionate, we need to be kind, we need to be caring, we need to be each other's brothers and sisters, we need to lift each other up, we need to get to the point where we're thinking to ourselves, what can I do to help this person, what can I do to help this person, what can I do to help this person, okay? So now that being said, y'all, stand by for the book, it should be out before Christmas is what I'm saying now. I thought it was going to be Thanksgiving, but it's going to be definitely out before Christmas. It's called A Teen's Life. That's a little excerpt from the book I discussed with y'all. I am going to be having a free webinar, free seminar, free class, master class on love languages, five love languages for the parents of children parents of teens. I said children because my wife's child is a dog, okay? So that's why I said that Lulu is her baby. So parents of children, parents of teens are having a live masterclass stand by on five love languages so we can learn how to communicate better with our children and our teens. So until next week, I think I might be on the plane. I'm not sure. If I'm not, then I'll do a Facebook Live. If I am, then I won't be able to do one. But until next week, thank you all so much for joining me. Please stand by for my book. I promise you it is going to be good because it's me. You know? So stand by for the book. As soon as it's ready, I'll let y'all know we're going to have a big old party to launch it. And um, until then, I will see you all later. Remember, suicide is real. It is serious. People that make threats do carry it out. So be compassionate. Okay? Deuces. Thank you all for hanging out with Dr. Lulu today. Bye.